If you ever had the chance to use a big monitor during a shoot, you know how amazing it is. You notice so much more than on a 5 or even a 7 inch screen. If you haven't, you need to try it. Though, I get it, big director's monitors are expensive. TVs and computer monitors are often a great affordable way to do this, but then you have to deal with the wires and they're not exactly portable. Like, what, you're gonna carry a desk with you everywhere? Well, today, I'm going to modify this monitor so that I can still use it on my desk back there, but can also easily remove it, take it with me on set, attach it to a C-stand, power it with a V-mount, and even easily add things like this wireless receiver or an SDI input. Stick around. For better or worse, I'm actually not starting from scratch. I've already achieved a lot of the goals I presented in the intro, and we'll go over that in a second. But today, there will also be quite a few changes to the setup in order to improve it further, and that's what will be pretty exciting. Let's start with catching up with what I've done so far. This is a VenQ EW277 HDR. Well, fake HDR. <laughs> Which, as I just learned, is now discontinued, so you won't be able to source this exact model, but no matter. Let's talk about what you need to look for when sourcing a monitor. The mod will work on most monitors, but also realize that it may not work on some. The first and most important thing you need to check for is that the monitor is powered by an external brick. A lot of monitors are powered this way. It allows the manufacturer to keep the monitor light and thin, both of which tend to be desirable features in a desktop monitor. However, it seems that BenQ in particular have shifted to using internal power supplies in their more appealing options. Their calibrated lineup monitors all seem to have internal power supplies. If you're unsure, you can check this either in the product pictures if you see these AC power inputs on the back, then there is no power brick. The ones we want also sometimes have it listed as having an external power supply. Or check for a DC barrel input. We can't use the ones with internal power supplies for our project, not just because of the weight, but because to power these with a battery, we need them to have a DC input we can replace with the battery. If the conversion to DC power happens inside the case, that would rather complicate things, and so I don't recommend them. Technically, if you are very proficient with electronics, you could open up the monitor and still do what's required. But again, that's for the experienced DIYers among you, and so I won't be talking about what that may look like or entail. It's also important to know that TVs won't work for this either, as most of them have internal power supplies and we would run into the same issues. If you're feeling a little lost, don't worry, this will make sense as we go along. The next thing you want to look for is VESA mounting holes. It's actually less of a requirement. This monitor, for example, did not come with native ones, but I was able to source this adapter that functions fairly well, and your monitor might have similar options available if you just search for them on Amazon or Google. Just keep in mind that if you are buying a new monitor for this project, it'd be better if it came like that from the factory. It will make things simpler and mounting solutions way more stable. Again, this will make sense in a little bit. The last thing you want to look for is a high brightness monitor. Most desktop monitors are not meant to be used in really bright environments, or even worse, out in the sun. So having anything a little bit brighter than normal is helpful. Obviously, brighter options are more expensive, so don't necessarily go overboard. At some point, you might as well just get a dedicated production monitor. It'll be more rugged and just better in general. Just keep that in mind. You really want something brighter than 300 nits, which I'd say is the bare minimum, with anything above 400 to 500 being more of a luxury. Lastly, you might want to avoid ones with glossy backs. We'll be using adhesive to attach things, and glossy surfaces are not the best for this. Okay then, let's get started. The first thing to modify, or figure out rather, is mounting. If you're not planning to have this monitor serve dual purpose in your desk and while shooting, you have more options, and I actually recommend checking out Josh's video where he makes something similar, but more permanent. That video, by the way, reminded me I wanted to make this video a while ago, so thank you, Joshio. The solution I went for, as I mentioned earlier, includes using the VESA mount adapter and two of the same desk mount monitor arms. Originally, I didn't have a specific idea of how I was going to modify one of the arms to fit the stand, but I knew that if I could do this, the specific system can attach the monitor at the last hinge here with just two hex bolts. So once I figured out how to do it, I could easily move the monitor from the desk to the stand as needed. Other systems are even simpler. For example, this other arm type that I got for the third monitor can be released with one bolt. And though I never tried it until last night when preparing for this video, 
this base pole for the arm has a straightforward and more secure way to attach to a light stand. Just remove the cover from the top and insert it upside down into the stand so that it can screw into its 3 8 screw top. Or you can use an adapter if it's only a quarter inch. Or you can use the gobo and... what are these called? Uh, C-stand arms that have a 3 8 mouth. You get the idea. Options. They're good for you. This arm also provides better adjustments too. If I had to do it all over again, I'd definitely choose this arm. And in fact, I might be switching to it after this. The important thing to remember here is that if you want your monitors to serve dual purpose in your desk and on the field, you'll need two of the same arms. Otherwise, one is enough. All right, now that you've chosen the monitor and you, we know how we're gonna mount and dismount it, let's make it battery powered first before attaching the base of plate. For this, you'll need a multimeter, a DC to DC step up converter, assuming your monitor runs off 19 volts or thereof. Most of them do, but assuming you found one that runs off just 14 to 16 volts, you actually wouldn't even need this step. I've also never seen monitors that run off 12 volts or less, but assuming you have one, you'd actually need a step down converter. The steps, however, would be the same. These converters can take one voltage and convert it into something higher or lower, depending on the type. I have a link below to the converter I used, but you can also buy alternatives. Just make sure you get something that has a higher wattage than your monitor requires. You'll want to go over as much as possible to avoid problems with bad quality control, heat, and even noise. Some of these make a whining sound when pushed to the limit. The way I have mine set up right now, the converter is just hot glued to the back of the monitor and there is a D-tap, that's not it, hold on. And there's a D-tap cable coming into the input. This way I can use a beam on battery, but I actually don't have a place to hold them. So I often end up just taping the battery to the stand, not ideal. Depending on the model of the converter you got, you'll find one to three small potentiometers on the board itself. This little blue box in my case. These are for adjusting the output voltage, the current, and the shutoff voltage. The one we care about is the output voltage. The other adjustments are meant for LED lights and, and protected batteries. As long as they're open enough, they don't affect our use case. Though if you want to keep it simple, just get one without the extra two adjustments. Mine is already set to the right voltage, but I'll show you how to adjust it in one second if you're following this as a guide. So here comes one of the new additions, and what should be your second step. I need to find a way to mount a battery to the back of this monitor. And for that, we have this. It's a V-mount plate adapter. You'd normally use this on the back of cameras, like the Ursa for example. It came with four small bolts, but no nuts. So we'll have to either source some ourselves or just use some strong glue. Depending on how the back of your monitor is designed, there might not even be enough space for these guys anyways. You might also just not want to go through the hassle and the risk of what I'm about to do. Before we do any of that though, now is a good time to adjust your DC converter to the right output. Just plug in these wires to the input of the converter, making sure you have the right polarity. Then using a multimeter, check the output side. Adjust your VCC potentiometer, the blue box we mentioned earlier, until you reach your required output voltage and that's it, you're done with this step. Okay, so back to mounting. To make use of these tiny bolts, I'll be removing the back panel of my monitor. This might be different depending on your model. You'll want to check for any visible screws on the back, um, including next to your inputs. Then it's most likely just a bunch of clips that you can carefully pry open. Remember, it's important to check how much space is between the case and the panel. If it's flush and you add the screws, this could create a pressure point and ruin your screen. Mine has a nice curvature to it. Shall I leave the room? <laughs> it's also a dirty little girl. <laughs> Mine has a curvature to it, and so I assume there's some space. We just drill some holes and attach our plate. I'm also going to route my cables through the back of the cover. It'd be great if there was enough space for our DC converters, but for now, they'll just stay outside, exposed. The next step is to add the cable to the output side of the DC converter. If you're using this motor solely for this purpose, you can just cut the cable from the included power brick and guarantee compatibility. Otherwise, you'll want to research the barrel size of the connector of your monitor and get one like it to use with the converter. As you can see, now whenever I'm at the desk, I plug in the brick that stays at my desk and while I'm on the go, I plug in the battery connected barrel and BAM! It's now battery powered. From here, I added a second DC converter. 
This one is already set to step down to 5 volts and conveniently has the USB portal as an output. This is very similar to what I did on the video I mentioned earlier. And you can use the same small board that fits under the B-mount plate. I, however, will be sticking to this larger one. It has a voltmeter and it helps me know how much battery I have left. Just like we did in that video, we have to connect this in parallel to the battery plate. And it's ready to go. Now, while you could use this as a phone charger, I don't imagine you'd really want to. It can be used to power one of these. I don't have it in my hand, it's okay. An SDI to HDMI converter. There's also 4K versions of these, but since I'm just using a 1080p monitor, this is plenty. We'll simply attach it to the back with some Velcro and you're good to go. Finally, for my last modification, I'll be gluing this. Yes, this used to be an MPF battery. It's one of the many that stopped working correctly as I mentioned in my battery video up in the corner. Why would I want to do this, you might be asking yourself? Well, you see, a lot of wireless video receivers have an MPF battery plate on the back. If we simply attach a non-functional MPF battery bottom to the back of the monitor, now I've created a place to mount these types of receivers just like that. If you feel like it, you could also add a third DC converter a step down to 7.4 volts. That way you wouldn't even need to worry about powering the wireless receiver. I, however, decided not to go that route and instead we'll just use the included DTAP connector, which I can plug straight into the battery plate we installed. And that's it. Here it is, a battery powered big screen monitor with HDMI and SDI inputs, easily mountable on a light stand and can even be used with a wireless system, no problem. Is this not the coolest thing I've made? There's definitely some room for improvement. I'm not the biggest fan of the exposed PCBs on the back. If I had a 3D printer, I'd probably make a casing for the PCB boards. But like Lewis says, there is nothing more permanent than a temporary fix. Be sure to leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Let me know if you think you know a way how to make this even better. Or if you have any questions, tag me if you attempt this and start using it on your own productions. Subscribe for more content like this and give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful or useful. And I'll see you guys next time. Confession time, I haven't done anything yet because I'm bad at planning videos. We don't have the copyright for that song and I don't know where it's from. La, 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 la. Okay, cut.